Welcome back. Today I'm going to try to play a 30 minute game on Lee Chess. As usual, I will cut out all the long pauses where I don't talk or where I'm waiting for my opponent to move. So the game shouldn't be that long for you, although it should be that long for me. Uh, because one of the reasons to play these games is to practice using my time and to actually think about my moves instead of just reacting. If you're new to my channel, I'm not a titled player or a chess coach, as with many other chess YouTubers. I'm just a random person trying to get better at chess, or at least trying not to get worse. The older I get, the more it feels like my brain tries to fit itself into into ruts and just do the same thing all the time, just live by habit. I guess it gets kind of lazy and tired, but I'm trying to continue to stretch it and to force my brain to work. And that's one reason that I'm, you know, that I'm into chess. Hopefully you'll get something out of this, uh, even if it is only to laugh at the things that I miss, which I very often miss obvious things. Anyway, I'm going to click 30 plus zero and hopefully we won't have to wait too long to get paired. The last time that I tried this, I had to wait several minutes to get paired, but uh, this time it went pretty quickly. Okay, we are going to play a Karakon defense. I have not yet come up with another response to e4. Okay, I have seen that a few times. That, of course, defends this spot. I don't know what else to do besides play d5. If they take, I'll take, and then uh, they've lost a center pawn. But they might push it. Some people push here. All right, my opponent is having a think about that. Good for them. Usually you don't want to spend that much time thinking on move two or three, but, you know, if they're practicing an opening, then I completely understand. Honestly, that's one reason to learn openings, I think, is so you don't have to spend a lot of time thinking on the first few moves. Maybe they're trying to remember a particular trap that they learned. I don't know. Okay, there we go. This is normal. I have been in this exact position dozens, if not more times. I've started to see that a lot lately. It keeps this bishop from coming out here, which is just fine. I'm going to put it here on f5 instead, and if they push the g-pawn, I'll drop it back this way. And then, of course, we'll have to push the h-pawn to hide the bishop, but a lot of times what my opponent will do right here is get out their light squared bishop, and we'll just trade bishops, which, you know, is fine. I'm going to go ahead and push this pawn forward, so if they immediately attack my bishop, I can drop it back. Now, again, what I have seen here is that they wait until I have dropped this back and then get the bishop out so we can trade. I think the idea is to make me waste a move, but I have definitely, you know, seen all this before. What I would like to do at some point is to play e6 so I can get out my dark squared bishop, although sometimes they'll bring theirs out first. And then at some point I'd like to get this knight out to one of these two squares and castle. But yeah, what I often see here is either this pawn coming out, the light squared bishop coming out to d3, or the knight going over to h4. And if they play one of those moves, you know, good for them. Oh yeah, and the other thing that I said, bringing the, this bishop out to f4. But maybe they'll surprise me. Maybe we'll see something different. Maybe we'll see that light squared bishop come over here to check me. That happens sometimes too. Ah, they did play one of the moves that I said. How about that? All right. And now sometimes they push this, but usually not. Yeah, usually they come over here and check and then we can block that. They played that really quick after the other one like they were really thinking about it. What is the thing to do here? Obviously, they have lined up uh, two pieces, you know, on this, but I think I can just put a rook on that. I think that's what I'm supposed to do here. Let's go ahead and put a rook on that. Now, this uh, this little plan that they just did here, they played those three moves pretty quickly in succession, the pawn and then the bishop and the knight. So I'm guessing that they kind of, you know, spent the time before that figuring that out or trying to decide what the best order for those moves was. But, but they, they did it, and, and now they're deciding, I guess, whether or not they want to trade both of those pieces for the knight and the pawn, or just one of those pieces for the pawn. That happens here sometimes. Sometimes they'll just trade one piece for the pawn, and then they'll bring the other one back somewhere. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I have seen this exact position before, and I think at least once what I've seen here is somebody taking the f7 pawn with the knight, which, of course, I just have to take with my king. At least I'm pretty sure that's what I'm supposed to do. Oh, but they, they have attacked the knight with the pawn. I guess the idea is that when I take, they'll put a bishop here. All right, you know, let's do it. Maybe they'll put the bishop there, or maybe they'll bring the other pawn. They put the bishop there. Okay, good for them. Well, what I'm going to do is encourage this situation over here to happen. I think they're going to take take the knight with one of those pieces. I don't know which one. They did they did it with the bishop. Okay, and now I guess they're going to try to take here. Is, is, was that the point of putting the bishop there? I, I guess it was. Well, I'll take with that then. And now are they going to try to put the queen here to uh, to checkmate me? Is that their idea? Wow, I'm, I'm pretty good at this, I think. I'm, I'm just going to not let that happen. That's my plan. I'm, I'm going to put this pawn right there. Although I guess I could have just taken the knight, now that I think about it. But now I can take whichever piece I want. Yes, it's possible I'm missing something. That happens a lot. Okay, well, I'm going to take the knight. And they're going to check there. And looks like they want to win my rook. That was the, the bright idea in that one. But they're not going to be able to win my rook because their queen is pinned. So they're going to have to trade for my queen. They did. And now are they going to castle queen side? They might. I'm going to castle over here. 
and then move my bishop. Let's see, where should I put it? Should I pin this knight and try to mess up their pawn structure? Or, or should I come over here and block that pawn and aim at this pawn? They can really easily defend that one way or the other. Oh, they defended it with the knight? Good job. I'd like to get my other bishop out now, and I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. I don't know if I should push this pawn. Let's do that. Let's push this pawn. And then my bishop's pointed there at that at that pawn. And my, and my bishop here is safe. And, and I think the pawn is safe. They're, they're not going to have much problem with that. I'm going to go ahead and push the other pawn too, because it looks like they're trying to line up. Yeah, see there? That's exactly what it looked like they were doing. I think I'm just going to take the other rook then and see what they do about that. I don't know if I should take this pawn. I think I should. I'm going to go ahead and take that pawn. And then I can get out this way when they check me. Oh, they didn't check me. Okay, good for them. They didn't think it was necessary to check me. But I am going to protect my back F pawn once they take their... I'm going to protect some pawns here and also be guarding if they decide to try to promote that. Oh, they've attacked my bishop. Nice. Going to protect it with this rook. Uh, because, you know, I don't want him to get a pawn afterward. Oh, very nice. That looks good. Very tasty. I think I can just push this though, right? I think I can just push this pawn and, and guard that way. But now my bishop's not guarding over here anymore, so I'm going to have to bring the rook around to, uh, to defend against that passed pawn. Okay, they have checked me. But weirdly enough, my king didn't light up in red. Oh, it finally... Wait, it only did it when I touched it. That's weird. Okay, they're going to get that pawn. Very nice. Okay, I'm proud of my opponent for thinking of that. But I'm going to come this way. I'm adding a little bit of defense here because obviously they're going to get that pawn. Then I'm going to go after their other one, which I assume they'll push at that point. Oh, maybe they weren't going after that pawn. They're having to think about it now. Sorry, I thought that was the whole reason of going in there, was, was to go after this pawn. But maybe they're deciding that this is safe and they're going to leave it and try to push here. But I was going to try to come over and then maybe get my other rook over there and come down this way. Because I have this open file. And I still have my bishop pointed there at their c2 pawn. Oh, they did push it. Okay. Well, good for them. I'm not sure I want to go here just yet because they can immediately attack the rook. But I think that'd be okay because I would just come up after it. So I'm going to do that. Now they don't want to push this. They probably want to go there. Wow, that was I predicted that easily. I feel pretty good for predicting that. Now where's that bish, uh, where's that knight going to go? Because that's defended. That's oh, I think all the they has to go back to where it was. Yeah. Oh, it didn't. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to take that pawn then. And can they fork me or anything? No, they can't. Okay. They got my bishop. That was um, I don't think that was good, but oh, that was good. Nice. Well, I'm proud of them. They're going to get my rook for free and there's nothing I can do about it. I can't even go after that pawn. Okay. Let's see if I go over here. Can they fork me? No, I'm not checkable right now. But they had a good job figuring that out. I missed something there that they, they had the little fork coming. I'm going to go ahead and check them. And then I'm going to check them again and see if they come toward me or how this works out. They might hang around here trying to defend their C pawn. They did. Okay. Good for them. And I can't quite come after the knight yet, but I can start pushing this pawn. Should I do that? I think I should. And their knight is guarding that square, but uh, so is my rook, so I think I'm okay. And they can't check me just now. Oh, nice. I guess I could leave it there. Let them take it, and once they take it, then I can get their other pawn that they won't be defending anymore. Or I could just push this one. Why don't we say we just push this one and see if they want a little tradey poo here? I don't know why I said tradey poo. It just popped into my mouth before my brain had a chance to stop it. Oh, they did. Well, let's take it. They can check me now. I don't know if that does a lot of good, but they can. All right. One reason I wanted to trade for that pawn is because it was keeping my king from coming closer to their knight. So I'm going to be able to get closer to their knight now. It's just going to take me a second. So let's do that this way. Now they can check me, but then I get to go uh, push this pawn forward. No, I don't, because once I get out of check, they'll be able to put their knight back there. Oh, they did that. Okay. Well, that's what I wanted them to do, because I wanted to get this pawn. And now they have checked me, so I'm going to go back here where they can't check me, and then they're going to attack my rook, I assume, and my other pawn. Very nice. If they do that, I, I'm going to go here and win this pawn. But they might attack over there. Either way, I'm going to try to check them and win that pawn. That's my plan. I'm actually really impressed with how my opponent's playing. It looks like they're taking their time and figuring things out, but I think in a lot of the cases, it's leaving something pretty obvious for me. Okay, good job. They thought about that. Now they can attack my rook and I can't come there. 
Should I go here then and pin that knight? Or should I push, should I try to bring my king so I can push the pawn? Let's see. If I go here, they can't check me, right? Okay, let's go there and see if we can try to push the pawn. They might try to come to it. Or they might be headed over here to get my A pawn. And they still might be thinking of, of the, uh, you know, attacking my rook idea. Oh, my, my computer says I'm reconnecting. Is that not showing up, that little red thing down at the lower left? Why, why am I not connected? Sorry, what, my internet is fine here. What's going on? Okay, yeah, I, I get that, but Lee Chess has kicked me off. I hope that doesn't mean that, you know, something bad has happened to the website because it looks like I'm fine here. Okay, apparently I just lost two minutes because Lee Chess thought I wasn't on the internet even though I was. Okay, they've pushed that pawn. All right, well, I'm going to do what I said was, was, was to push this pawn. That's pretty frustrating. Not that I need those two minutes later, but I, I'm clearly going to have enough time. But I already knew what I was going to do, and then now I'm completely distracted because of... And I know it was just Lee Chess. I did pause the video. All the other websites were working for me. But Lee Chess says, you don't have any internet whenever I tried to reach it. Okay, maybe the opponent is having that uh, similar problem as well. I guess I'll keep pushing that if they come toward it with their king. I'm going to keep coming after it. They did come toward it with their king. Now they can check me, but I can just go further forward. Okay, I'm going to come further forward. They can check me again, but I'm going to go further forward. And now I think they're going to have to go there to block my pawn's path. Oh, very nice. Well, let's just calculate something here. What if I check them right now? Protected by the pawn, which is protected by my king. And when they get out of check, one of the three possible ways, I take that nine. And when they take my rook back, I'm going to promote in two turns. I think that's going to work for me. It's possible I've missed something, but let's just go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to promote. They're going to take that and try to promote as well. But I think I win here because I'm going to do that. And I'm going to get in front of that pawn. And then I'm going to take it. Like so. Then I'm going to take the other one. And I think what we're going to do is just bring our king and try to trap them on this lower half of the board here. My opponent has left the game. I'm not going to assume that they've abandoned. I'm going to assume that Lee Chess did the same thing to them that it did to me, which was just pretend that there was no internet. It says I can call the game a draw or wait. No, I, no, I can claim victory. Well, I'm not going to call it a draw because I'm winning. What happened? That went away. Oh, they came back. See, it's a good thing I waited just to be fair. Yeah, if I clicked claim victory, that wouldn't have been fair because here they, they want uh, me to prove that I know how to checkmate them with just a queen. And that's okay. I don't mind that. We're going to work their way down here to the back rank. And we did. And now I'm going to bring my king. And then we're going to checkmate them on this turn. All right. They didn't leave the game. They got kicked off the same way that I did, I think. But I'm glad I won. Oh, and I got 60 points for it. That's uh, because I hadn't played in a while, I guess. I don't know how often you have to play to get rid of the question mark on the rating. It seems like I, I play these relatively often, but I don't play them every day. I don't have that kind of time. I think my opponent did a better job than I did of using their time. Although some of their time usage might have been similar to my time usage, which was Lee Chess not knowing that they were online. And I think they found some pretty interesting tactics that I completely missed until they played them. So I want to say good job to my opponent. But I think they made a critical mistake early by coming in for the attack before they were prepared. I see this a lot at my level, not all the time, but fairly frequently where opponent will get a knight and a bishop down on my end and will start attacking. And sometimes they'll bring their queen too. And they'll leave the rest of their pieces at the back. They'll leave their king uncastled. And when the attack doesn't quite work, then suddenly it, I obviously have an advantage. But I know I made mistakes too. So I'm going to look at the analysis board here and see if I can figure out what they are. I did figure out recently that if you do not click this request a computer analysis, you can just turn on this eval bar, but turn off the lines and basically do what you do with chess.com. What you can't do is do that after you click request computer analysis. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. I'm going to turn off those lines. And now not only does it not have moves marked as blunders, mistakes and inaccuracies, which is a little distracting sometimes, but it also doesn't have the correct move listed in line here, which gets really frustrating because I'm trying to figure it out for myself. So I'm going to click through until it's obvious that one of us made a mistake. I'm guessing that last move would have been counted as inaccurate by, by a game review because it went from around 0, 0 0.1, to minus 0 0.3. It actually said 0.4 there for a second, but now it's 0.3. So suddenly they've given me an advantage, but I don't know if I blocked that the best way. Maybe I should have used this knight. Maybe I should have put this knight here. I don't know. 
Okay, I that wasn't the best way because it goes back to zero or close to it. So I'm guessing I probably should have blocked with the other knight. Just out of curiosity. Oh no, I should have I should have put this knight here on d7 rather than on c7. Okay. I mean, there are some obvious improvements here. On d7, it's protected by the other knight. It's protected by my queen and my king, incidentally. But over here, it's only protected by the pawn. Okay, and according to this line, after I played up here, it was definitely their best move to play knight to e5. And I should have immediately pushed at the bishop. And it says they would have taken with the knight. I don't think they would have, because that would have put my queen up here uh, defending the square. I think if I had pushed a6, I think they would have taken with the bishop. But I don't know. But rook to c8 was just as good, so I don't feel bad about that. And now what they were supposed to do was finish their development, according to Stockfish. It wants them to put this bishop out here. It even wants them to castle on the following turn. But this is the part where I was talking about where my opponent decided that two pieces was enough, and they kept coming. So yeah, this next move was probably counted as a mistake, because it went from 0 to minus 0 0.8 at least a mistake. And it was definitely my best move to take it. Okay, that made sense and their best move to take back with the bishop. But now I'm supposed to go out here. That's interesting. Or just play e6. But here's where I decided to play a6. Did that set us back? Not that much. That's pretty close in rating to the other two. And here they were supposed to take and I was supposed to take back. Okay. And here's uh, another place where I felt like my opponent decided to continue with their attack rather than to finish their development. The engine wants them to get the queen out to one of those two squares. And on the next move, then it says to castle queenside. It doesn't want them to castle over here anymore because they threw that uh, g-pawn away. The g-pawn is gone. So now it says just go ahead and get the queen out and then castle over here. But they kept coming with just knights and bishops. And Stockfish says I should have come that way. I think I understand that because it would have freed my bishop. It still would have challenged the knight, but that's okay. And they definitely shouldn't have played that. That was a blunder. And yeah, okay, I mentioned this after I played the g-pawn. I should have just taken the knight or put my queen here, which attacks the knight and, uh, and defends against that. I did consider putting my queen there. And right after I played the, the g-pawn, I realized I should have taken that. I would have been up minus four, but playing this, I'm still up minus three. And they went all the way back with it, and of course I'm just supposed to take that knight. And now they're still supposed to castle queenside. Because their king is sitting here in the middle, they've given away this pawn, they don't have a center pawn. And they went down here and lost a piece. So that wasn't that great, because, oh yeah, I only had one move here. For just a second I was worried that they were going to get the rook until I realized, no, their queen's going to be pinned. So uh, they might as well take it, and then of course I get to develop my bishop, and now I'm just up minus four. And I think I was up minus four for the rest of the game. I'm going to pause the recording and click through the game and see if I can find anything else worth looking at. All right, here was an interesting moment. If you'll remember right here during the game, I talked about hoping that their king would come for my e-pawn so that I could get their c-pawn. And right here, the engine is definitely suggesting I should force them away from the c-pawn. And I can do that in a couple of ways. One is by directly attacking the knight on f2. If I go to f2 and I'm attacking the knight, their best way to defend the knight is to take my pawn, where from which they will be attacking my rook and defending the knight, and then I can go over and get the c-pawn. The other option is to go to d2, which checks them protected by my pawn, and their best move would be to take my pawn, in which case I would take their pawn. And I had been up minus four or better all the way up to this point until I did that. And now we're below, oh, it crept back up to minus four, but I was going to say this is the first place I fell below minus four, but I thought I had a good idea here because I had been thinking about how to get to this knight. I can't come to those two squares because of the knight, and I can't come to this one because of the pawn. So I thought if they take here and I take back, then I'll be able to get back to the knight. That was my idea there. And I'm still up minus four, so I guess it wasn't as bad as I thought, but, but I did like the engine's two suggestions here as to how to get the king to take the e-pawn so I could get their c-pawn. And another interesting point was right here where I talked about whether or not I should take this pawn. I was just about to take it out of habit, but then I realized, well, you know, then they're going to have another pawn there. And I thought of this because they can't get to this pawn. They can't get to my F pawn. I think on the previous turn, they were probably supposed to get in front of it, but I'm not sure. No, it says that their best move was king to D4. That's interesting. Or D3. But anyway, when I moved forward and they pushed that pawn, it is my best move to do what I said. I'm really glad that I found that. I felt like a little bit of a genius for finding it. I don't know how I sounded or what I looked like when I was explaining my idea, but, but I... Right after I saw it and was talking about it, I definitely felt like a genius because I was willing to give my rook up. And that's definitely what it says I would do because then they can't stop that. Except it says I will take this pawn first. But I wonder if that was my only move in that position because after this and they and I took the knight and they took back. Yeah, it says my best move is to take this pawn, but it's only my best move by one move in a mating sequence. It's almost as good to play F2. 
So this isn't bad. Of course, I, I don't know why they took my pawn instead of just pushing past. Maybe they were thinking that if they took here, they would end up promoting on a square lined up with my king. But they must have miscalculated as to how long it would take to promote because what, what are they going to do now? Move that pawn forward? That is their best move. They did move it forward. Oh, and Stockfish says I should have just gotten right there. Nice. Well, I didn't even see that. At this point, I was just pretty sure I could just go ahead and win the pawn this way. That's not even my second best move. My second best move, it says, is to check on c4 and then take this pawn. Okay. Well, I did it a long way around. Okay. Wasted one move there. And then, of course, get in front of that pawn. Yep, that was my best move. Doesn't matter what they do. I'm going to take this pawn with check. And then it actually would have been better if I had just gone here, according to the engine. But you know what? I'm impressed with my opponent for continuing to play on here and forcing me to checkmate them. Because at our level, I know I say this a lot, but it bears repeating. At our level, not everyone knows how to do this. Now, at some point in this sequence, you should be able to tell by the way that I'm moving my queen and king that I do know how to do it. But it's okay to play it out. It's not like when you're a 2700 Super Grandmaster and it's disrespectful to force the opponent to checkmate you tediously after a three hour game or something like that. We run into a lot of people at our rating level, at my rating level, who are still learning how to play chess. So it's okay that they forced me to checkmate them. And I don't mind proving that I know how, because not everybody does. Well, I feel pretty good about that. Thank you for spending your time here. If you have any commentary on this game or the way that I played it, the really cool thing is there's a comment box. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.